Thank you for joining us, Owen. You guys are watching session number three of the Build Your Funnel Bootcamp. And we have come so far, you guys. We have talked about content strategy and generating leads. We have talked about converting those leads into paying customers. And today we are talking about something that to me is one of the most important elements for small business owners, which is customer retention and building that tight-knit community around you of customers that'll stay with you and stick with you, building the retention, building your customer loyalty. That is super, super important always and probably now more than ever. So we have Owen with us today. We are super excited to get started. We're live on Zoom. We're live on Facebook. Session is being recorded in case you have to hop off in the middle. And I think we're ready to get started. So thanks again for joining us. I'm Rachel Shapiro. Um, I'm with Vesita product marketing manager. And I, there is nothing I love more than chatting with small business owners, talking to them, to, talking to them about their day to day and figuring out how we as a company can help them and support them. Again, now, you know, a lot of new challenges are out there. So we're, we're just like you guys, you know, trying to figure out how, what we can do, how we can make your life just a little bit easier. Here with us today is Owen, our absolutely favorite marketing online guru. He, Owen has taught me so much. In the short time that I've known Owen, I have been exposed to this like whole universe of YouTube. Yeah. And I've, I've been doing marketing for like um, almost a decade now. You'd think like I'd know my stuff, but once he starts talking to me about, you know, YouTube funnels and all this online stuff, mind blowing guys. So Owen, tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do for the folks that haven't been with us yet. Yeah, if it's your first time here, this is your first session, welcome. And if you uh, had a chance to watch session one and session two, we're glad that you're back. Be sure to get the recordings if you haven't watched those yet. I'm Owen Video, I'm a YouTube growth coach. And what that means is that thought leaders, business owners, CEOs, executives, they hire me to help them build a YouTube channel. Now we do work with entrepreneurs and we work with small business owners as well through our training programs that you can check out at the video marketing school but you know if you're if you're unfamiliar with me what i do is is i teach youtube yes but youtube works because we connect them to revenue we connect our youtube videos to generating revenue right you make a youtube video and you say hey go download my free ebook or you make a video and you say hey go go get a free trial of my software you make an ebook and you say hey give me a call if you want a 15 minute appointment We've become very good at teaching you how to make a video that gets the viewer to click on the link. And then when they click on a link, they're in your funnel. And that is super, super important because I have been teaching funnels for a long, long time. In fact, uh, there are people out there who know me as a funnel coach, really, because we've built entire funnels for, for brands and big companies. Now, a funnel like the one that you're seeing on your screen now is how you take a great video right over here and you drive the customer to a lead magnet like a free ebook or a, a, you know, a, a PDF guide, recipe books. You nurture them with email so that you can get them to a 15-minute pre-qual call. Now, if you don't understand this, you know, why don't I just jump into the, to the sale? This is what I'm telling you. If your sales are weak, if your sales are struggling, it's because you're not doing a pre-qualification call. All right, and the 15-minute pre-qualification call does so many wonderful psychological things for you in, in terms of moving the customer to, to a sale. And so what I would like for you to do is go back and watch session two if you haven't seen it because we go into the 15-minute call. And the 15-minute call is just a stepping stone, a stepping stone for getting your customer onto a sales call. Now, this is the kind of stuff that we teach on a daily basis. And I even have a whole bigger training on this that goes a little bit deeper into the process. And if you follow me on Instagram, I will share that training with you for free. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to get out your phones right now. Where, in fact, where is my phone? I feel like I am at a loss here because my phone is not here. I, where is my phone? Go on your phone right now to Instagram and search for Owen Video. I'm gonna wait while you do that. Just go ahead and go to Owen Video. And over here, my, Rachel, do you wanna know, you know, wanna know why I'm so busted right now? Because I was going to pick up my phone and actually text my assistant to bring me a coffee. And I was gonna oh. pretend like I was on Instagram like go to Instagram and, and just like get me some coffee, but now I did. Oh no, I, we've deprived I you. I know, I know. But you know, I'll tell you, 
Uh, I, I wanted to share that with you because it's real. It's human. I didn't. How many of you guys are drinking coffee right now? Who's drinking water? Tell me, what are you drinking? What's on your desk right now? I want to hear from you. But go to Instagram, look for Owen video, go to my latest post, and I want you to type the word Vesita. Okay, type in the word Vesita, and we'll send you our uh, video funnel scripts. Okay, and there's a training that goes along with it. So if you don't know what that is, just go get it. And we'll, we'll send you the training on what it is. Oh, we've already got some, uh, some people coming in and, and, and logging in. Okay, wonderful. So let's dig into our session today. If this is your first session with us. You are really in for a treat because we're teaching on the customer retention model. And this has been sort of a journey for us, right? We started with session one where we talked about content strategy and lead generation, right? That's making a video, writing a blog, or doing a podcast that generates uh, leads for your business, okay? And it's, it's also the, the infrastructure you need to have in place to capture an email. Actually, you know, what's the difference between a lead and, and just someone who raises their hand, okay? So that's session number one. Session number two is we talked about the conversion mechanism, okay? We talked about taking this name and email that's a lead, someone interested in your product or service, and then what, what is the content that turns them into a customer, okay? And that we talked about on session two and that went into the 15 minute call and I gave away a, I gave away a sales, uh, a, a, a sales script there. And uh, you guys need to watch that. It's really good. So today we're talking about building retention and customer loyalty. And I wanted to just sort of, you know, dig into what that actually means, right? Customer retention, because I don't think that I was really sure about, you know, what this meant when I was brand new in my business, the very beginning of my business. I wanted to make sales, right? And that was my primary goal. Um, and then when I made sales, I, I was, you know, believe it or not, really, really, really focused on fulfilling the order and like being a great coach. And, and at, at the beginning of my career, I was a video um, creator. I actually would shoot the video for you and edit it for you. And so I was really like concerned about, fulfilling the orders well. Does that make sense, Rachel? Have you ever seen that from small business owners where we're like, we want to make sales and then we want to be really good at what we do? It's, it's a real struggle because when you run a small business, especially like in the early days, you have your expertise, like you have your domain, it's what you know how to do. So if, if you're like a massage therapist and I see, you know, you guys are telling us what you do. So continue doing that. If you haven't tell us, told us what you do yet, uh, go ahead and drop that in the comment section. Yeah. But again, if you're, if you're like, you know, a fashion designer or you do, you know, um, yoga or Pilates, you know, you're really focused on delivering that service and being absolutely great at it and keeping up with, you know, all yeah. the trends of the industry. You're not necessarily the type of person that is ready to do, you know, this hard core marketing and sales. And it's a really hard, you know, kind of struggle to find the balance between doing what you do, what, 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 you know, what drives you, what you have a passion about, as well as all the administrative stuff that just yeah. come along with running the business It's part of the package deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's exactly where I wanted to go with this because I, you know, I think that there's a lot of value in being a great fulfiller of your service and, and doing a phenomenal job and earning a four-star review. That's very, very important but we also need to be focused on customer retention. That is keeping the customer. And just because they're a customer once, how do we get them to be a customer over and over and over again? And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna be talking about retention and how to take that customer that bought from you. And maybe they bought at an ultra low level. In, in internet marketing, we call this a tripwire, where someone buys a $7 product for you and then you're immediately trying to move them into a higher end product. Let's say it's a $300 product. And then from that product, you're moving them into maybe a monthly membership or some type of MRR, monthly recurring revenue. Okay. And this is the focus of, of today is we're going to talk about retention and we're going to do that. We're going to talk about a couple of different points on retention. We're going to talk about why we're in. Oh, sorry. I just see Go someone ahead. just asked me if they if they can still watch the session, uh, although they missed the other two. So let me tell you guys, the answer is absolutely yes. These yeah. sessions, they, it's kind of like, I want to say it's kind of like Star Wars, you know, like you can watch each movie to itself as like a whole story and it has, you know, its whole, you know, storyline and characters and 
comic anecdotes and you know special effects it's super enjoyable to watch as one piece but if you want to get the full experience and the context and the references definitely uh you know take stay with us now but take some time to uh fill to watch uh, the recordings of session one and two just so you get the whole context yeah. we will be sharing those links with you um at the end of today's session yeah i think it's really that's a really great point you know that that you could jump into these at any at any session and you're going to get a ton of great information. And when you, when you combine them all as a whole, what you've got is you've got a really solid sort of uh, collection of trainings that you can go back to and that you can um, rely on to refresh your skills. You know, when I buy a course, I, I bookmark it or when I buy a program or I opt into something, I, I put it in my project manager. And so I always have access to it. I can go back to it. I don't see it every day, but I know if I want to go back to it, I can read. And that's something that we we highly recommend that you do. So we're going to talk about why retention is important. And it's so, so, so important. In fact, I think it's more important than fulfilling the order. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, I'm focused on getting the customer to buy again. Okay. That doesn't mean I, I'm horrible at my service. Okay. It's that balance. It's, it's getting a service that, that, is, that works and it's duplicatable and people like it. They love it. Um, but I'm also able to convert people to the next level at an ongoing rate. And I'm going to tell you guys some secrets about that. We're also going to talk about generating repeat business and getting that buy over and over and over again. And we're going to talk about four key touch points. And these are really just, this is just the opening door of the four major touch points that you have to be thinking on in terms of an annual client value. Okay. So the annual value of a client, right? What are they worth for the entire year? just not right now, right? The sale might be 10 yoga sessions, right? And that's $300, $500, whatever the case might be. But I want you thinking bigger than that. I want you thinking about the annual, the, like the lifetime value or the annual value of the client, okay? And then Rachel's gonna be doing a demo on some Vesita features that you can use right now to implement these into, uh, into your business. So let's go back to the conversation about retention and talk about why it's so dang uh, important. First of all, uh, repeat business is cheaper to acquire. I mean, this is so well known now that it's it's a joke in in sitcoms. I was just watching The Office the other day. As many, how many of you have watched an episode of The Office in the last forty eight hours? Be honest. Okay, check it out. I want to know who's watching The Office. You know, in The Office, um, uh, there was I want to call it a joke, but it was a line in the in the show where they're like, you know, well, uh, you know, everybody knows that uh, getting repeat business is cheaper than than getting a, a customer for the first time. And it is, I mean, just think about how much, it, how much it costs you to acquire a new customer, right? After investing in the sales and the marketing process alone, you've also got the mental energy and the mental stress and the, the sort of the, you know, that, that's, what do you want to call it? Survival thing that comes in and it's just like, man, I got to get a sale today. You know, like think about that stress and how much it costs you to acquire that that one-time customer, getting them to like give you the credit card the first time. Once you've done that, that's the hardest part. And so now it's easy and you can increase your return on that, on that time and that, that investment by building out a longer term relationship. And you know, so many of us, I think you acquire a customer and then you're like, oh, phew, I'm done, right? It's like when you acquire the customer, I think it's kind of like, you, you've, you've made it the first mile, right? Wow, <laughs> went the first mile, right? And you climbed uphill, and, but you gotta keep running. So now it's like, okay, good. You know, what are my next steps to make them happy? And when do I upsell them? This is really key. You know, is knowing when is the right time to upsell someone. For some people, it's gonna be different. I've had clients actually come into my program and as soon as day one, they're like, Owen, I love the program. I love where you're going, but it's not for me. I need something more, right? And that's usually the client that's like, I love the group setting, all really good people, but I want you, I want one-on-one -on -one time with you, right? And for those people, we have an upsell for them. And sometimes that happens right off the bat. But you know, what we found in our company is, is we have a 12-week um, program. And at that six-week mark is usually a, a good time for us to upsell them if they're moving in that direction. Um, that has worked out tremendously well for us. In fact, this quarter has been our, our best quarter in our business ever. And 80% of it is from customers that were with us last quarter. 
So imagine the tremendous stress it, it takes off of me and my team here when a client says, I want to keep going or I want to do personal time, you know, and I get, I get that sale. And so I know it's coming in the future. Okay. Repeat business has better lifetime value and studies show this over and over and over again. When you have a customer who's already with you, they're more likely to accept bigger deals. I have had this happen over and over and over again. In fact, it's part of our strategy and it's part of why we're talking about it today. Okay. I've had a customer that came on board. I mean, I don't want to give you the name because they're a fortune 200 company. They're a large company, depending on where you are in the world. You've definitely heard about this company. Okay. Uh, so, so this company came on board with me for a very, very small $10,000 production deal. And we made a very small amount of YouTube videos for them. And it went really well. That 9,000 turned into a $40,000 deal in the same year. That $40,000 deal became two consecutive years of a, like a $90,000 deal and a $110,000 deal. Every single time the customer resigned, they signed for more and more money. And it's easier to do that because they know you and they trust you and they've experienced you. And even if you're not working in $100,000 deals, if you're working in $500 deals, your question has got to be like, what's the next thing that I move this customer to? And if you don't have a monthly recurring program, you may want to consider one, okay? Now, the other part of retention is the ability to forecast future sales. I, got, I can't even tell you how much my, book, my bookkeeper, who's also my sister, you know, loves, she loves to know that her nieces and nephews are going to be okay next month. She loves to see my books and know that in a time when really a whole lot of people are out of work and are facing a slow economy, uh, they understand, she likes to see that, we're, that we've got so much work on the books, right? She likes to see that we have, you know, this growing pile of recurring deals that stabilize our company. You know what it does for me? It allows me to focus less on sales. When I know that I have people that are re-signing, okay, then I can focus less on new sales with is exha it's exhausting, it's draining, right? It's expensive. I can focus less on that and I can focus more on my retention programs and on automating my acquisition systems and things like this to lower costs and be the CEO of the company. Okay, so that's what retention is and that's why it's so important. And I want to hear from you guys in the chat room right now. What is your like monthly recurring program? If you don't have one, say I need one, right? But if you have one, if you have a monthly recurring program, I'd love to hear what it is, right? Is it like $97 a month for unlimited chiropractic? That's what I have. I have with my family. It's $97 a month we pay for everyone in the family can get adjusted in the chiropractor as really as many times as we want. We go once a week. And the, the only times you can go is like like actually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between like, uh, I think it's three and six. So you have to go at those times and you know that works perfectly for us. And it's a great program for this chiropractor. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your, what are your um, retention offers? And let's get the ball rolling and talking a little bit because we are going to do a little bit of a breakout. Retention model is a three-step model that starts with selling your product. You have to sell them something first. Maybe it's a low-priced item like a $7 item, it's maybe even like a, a $27 item or a $97 item. It all really depends on what you sell, what your end product is, but you wanna be able to get them to buy, to get their credit card out, to make a purchase, to put in their PayPal address, whatever the case might be. Your next step there is the upsell, and this is where your mind has to be as soon as you get a new customer, is, is you know, as you are like onboarding your new customers, how are you going to get them into an environment where an upsell becomes easy? And the upsell needs to be related. It should be related to what it is that they bought originally. This is the easiest way to do it. And the biggest mistake that I have seen from business owners like you is you kind of, you bring them in on like, on, on like purple and then you try to upsell them to green you know, and, and you got to really keep them on the same, on the same thing. You know, you bring them in with, with widget a, you know, like a, um, one yoga session, then you need to upsell them 10 yoga sessions, right? So the, the mistake that I see is you sell them one yoga session and then you try to upsell them one like CrossFit weekend boot camp, right? That's, that's a, 
a cogent funnel, but it's like it like it's in the same family, but it's not necessarily what's going to convert the best. You want to take them from like they bought X and now they're going to buy two X or they bought X and now they're going to get the premium version of X. Okay. So it's very, very important that you have a good upsell. And then from the upsell, now you get into sort of this, this place of um, what, where are you going to go next? And in our company, every client's a little bit different, right? So with our clients, it's like, well, do they need to just buy X again? Or do they need to move on to Y, right? In my company, it's like, all right, they did the, the YouTube intensive with us for one session. Um, now let's move them into the live streaming Facebook intensive, right? And learn a whole new skill. But that only happens in the upsell, right? Where I could take them into a cross sell environment. So that's where customers who bought X might be interested in buying Y, okay? Now, I wanna walk you through a couple examples that we've, where, that we've built this and made this happen in our own business, okay? And the first example comes from an attorney. And what, what this attorney does is he is an immigration attorney. So he offers a, a guidebook that you can buy, right? And you can buy it $7, it might be a little bit more now, it might be like $27. But it's a low-end $7 pamphlet that it's like, hey, can't afford a lawyer? Grab this book. This will teach you everything a lawyer, a lawyer knows. After they buy that book, they go to a website that looks like this. Hey, I'm so glad that you bought that, that book. It's going to really help you. But do you need help right now? Right? Are you in a place where this book is great, but you know what? I really need to talk to somebody. I feel more comfortable I can talk to somebody. And when you click on that yellow button there, it leads the customer to a purchase form where you can schedule a call with the attorney. This is one call now. It's not a series of calls. It's one call. From there, you would actually go to the, the attorney's Vesita calendar. After you've made the purchase, now you can schedule that call in the Vesita calendar where finally you hit a thank you page and the customer has completed the cycle. Now, it doesn't have to be. Okay, it doesn't have to be in a funnel like this, right? This is an example of one system that you can use. In a lot of other cases, you might be doing the upselling over the phone, or you might be doing the upselling, you know, through your Zoom meetings with the client, or maybe even in private emails. I know that I've worked with corporate teams where, you know, we have calls and I'm, and that's like fulfilling the order, but I'm, I'm upselling the client, like the main contact on, a personal email thread. Let me give you guys sort of a funny example. So Vesita, Rachel uh, at Vesita came to me and we've worked together in the past. And, and she came to me and she said, hey, we were thinking about doing a funnel boot camp, you know, and, and uh, you know, we wanted to hire you for this and, and, and here's what we wanted to pay. And I go, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, it's an even better idea. Let's do three boot camps, right? And the price on that one would be three times that number. <laughs> it's a true story, guys. It's not just a, yeah, he's not just making this up on the spot. It really did fact, happen. And, that's, and we're here today, proof. And we're here today, you know. Um, uh, we're here today because of that conversation. And, you know, like, here's the thing in my mind is that we, we had already done some boot camps. It made sense. We had the relationship. And it's like, I, I want to grow with my customers. And it worked out phenomenal. In fact, um, I think this has been one of the greatest boot camps that we've had the pleasure of, of being a part of. So I really, I really like to see that. Uh, and then I, of course, gave you the example of the corporate company where you know I'm upselling them onto the next step. Here's the thing. It's not important whether it's done with websites and funnels or whether it's one-to-one -one phone calls or whether it's happening in an email thread. What's important is that you have a visual. You have that three-step system in mind and you, you never deviate from it, right? It's, it's not every client is going to have a different upsell. If that's the case, you're doing it wrong, right? It's, it's they buy something, you upsell and keep them there for a while. Keep them in upsell for a while. This is where you fulfill and really focus before you cross sell. And what we found in our business is that before we started doing this, right? Before we used to just crank our clients out. It's like you do the program and you leave the program. You do the program and you leave the program. And now what we're doing is we've shortened our time of engagement in the program and our goal is to get that customer three more times throughout the year taking our lifetime value of a client from five thousand and taking it to twenty thousand and here's the thing that's really just the annual value because after the year i have had clients spend twenty thousand with me 
and they still come back the next year or they'll take a year off and then come back to me again. So I want you guys to take a minute right now. We're going to do a sort of like a mini breakout. And I want you guys to, to get out a sheet of paper, get out a Google document of some kind where you can write this down, okay? And I, I, I really want to challenge you to write this down because you need to know what your three points are, okay? So I want you to write down this. My customers buy X, okay? So write that down. My customers buy X. What is X? I don't, don't write down X. My customers buy your main product or service. The main product or service. I know so many of you right now are selling like 25 things and you really probably just need to sell one thing, right? We're not here to talk about that today, but what's the main product, okay? Now, what is the most logical or the most popular upsell? Okay, is it, is it two of the products or services? Is it a, a backup package? I want you to just take a minute and think about that. You didn't get your coffee, so you're having your, your, I know. <laughs> your bottle no, of water. Nobody is answering my messages here, which is frustrating me because I'm like, I need you guys to, to get my coffee. All right, look, after the upsell, now what is the cross sell? Okay, and you know, it's okay if some of you guys have blanks. If some of you are like, I don't have an upsell or I don't have a cross sell. I think many of you are not gonna have an upsell, in fact, or a cross sell. I think a lot of you guys are going from sell the customer X to cross sell the customer Y. And we need to have more of a, a thing there. A great example of this is group coaching to private coaching, okay? So you sell the customer group coaching. In fact, this happens all the time with my program, The Video Marketing School, okay? Or in the, 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 the Video Sales Machine is the name of the course. And they buy the group program. And then once they buy, we get their email and we see who they are. And then we sort of like look at certain people and we go, that person's good for our intensive. And we try to get them on a phone call to upsell them to private training. Okay, keep this in mind. We don't do that with every customer. Some customers, they fit a profile and it's like they're gonna get a bet much better return on the five thousand dollar program right and that's how we take a five hundred dollar sale and turn it into a five thousand dollar sale in fact the last time that this happened this exact upsell happened um that client became our top performing client uh and actually to this for this year she's our top performing client of the year uh the next step okay what is your cross sell okay so you've got this person who came in on product x and they've upselled to 2x what is the next thing that you can sell them now what is the cross sell Right, so in our group, it's sort of like private, it's like group YouTube coaching. The upsell is private YouTube coaching. And then the cross sell would be private LinkedIn, or excuse me, private Facebook Live coaching. And it's the same 5,000. It's not, it's not an actual increase in, in the sale. It's, a, um, it's the same amount of money again through the year. Now, here's another version that we have at our company, right, is that we, we sell you the group training. Then we have the opportunity to upsell you to private training. And then the cross sell is, you know, the Facebook live training or it's um, done for you editing and, and promotion, right? And that, that's going to be more like 50,000, okay? But we have options, you know? And so that's what I want to see from you guys. I want to see you guys write those down right now. And I would love for you to share those with us in the chat room right now. So I'd love to hear what you sell, what's your upsell and what's your cross sell. Go ahead and like copy and paste and put it in the chat room right now. And then we'll look for those as they come in. I wanna look from some of these. Nitsa is saying, I sell records management strategy sessions. The upsell is a more intensive needs assessment. Really, really good. The cross sell could be done for you, right? So we're on, we're on the right, we're on the right path there. I'd love to see that might be like you sell one meeting and then you upsell to four meetings and then you have maybe even a done for you service on the side, but you're on the right path. I'd love to hear from you guys on that. Continue to write that in and I want to go into the last part of this um, section of our presentation today and I got to get my notes out. And that is the four touch points, okay? We're, we're talking about how to take a, a customer and we talked about how to like get them to buy something and then upsell to something and then even to cross sell them something down the line.
But I also want to kind of touch on these four touch points that you should be utilizing in your business all throughout the year because just because they didn't buy in 30 days doesn't mean that they're not a great prospect in six months, eight months, nine months. And I want you to have processes in place in case they say no to the upsell. What do you do if they say no to the upsell? Well, I want you to keep in mind these four touch points. And these four touch points are, you know, work like every other relationship that you're in. So the customers bought from you, you went for the upsell, they said no. Like, hey pal, slow down, right? We're gonna try your, your basic thing first and we'll see how it goes. Okay, well this should now trigger for you your nurture campaign. And your nurture campaigns are relationship campaigns. You're building relationship and every relationship has give and take. So you wanna create a list of freebies, things that you can give in exchange for the customers making a purchase or uh, are doing, so, excuse me, doing something for you, okay? So for example, throughout the year, give them another freebie and once they get the freebie, ask them to make a purchase, okay? Or maybe you could offer them a coupon if they would rate your business. I love these. And I love these from like a, a veterinarian standpoint. And what I mean by that is I love it when like the local vet offers me a coupon because veterinarians are expensive. You know what I mean? And my dog jumped off like a 10 foot wall yesterday. I have a 20 pound dog and he jumps off a 10 foot wall like an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and he, he's limping and I'm just like, oh, I couldn't believe he did that. Um, so I, I love local businesses offering coupons. A little bit harder in the e-business um, world, but it can be done. Uh, in the e-business world, digital marketing, I really love bonus content. I love it. Behind the scenes, webinars, live streams, Q&As, especially when it's public to the world, but I have like Zoom access, right? So it's like you do a Zoom and then you launch it on YouTube or something. Uh, and the exchange for that, you've got to tell five of your friends to come and join you, okay? So I want you guys to think about an annual, an annual give and take program, give and ask program where you can ask your customer to do things in exchange for bonus things. Here are the big four um, reasons or excuses that I use to get in touch with my clients on a regular basis throughout the year so that I don't appear cheesy or salesy. The first of those is um, my greeting, okay? When, whenever somebody is new to our company, it's kind of obvious, but we gotta cover it, is greeting newcomers with a warm sort of orientation message. Now. How many of you guys are actually doing this? When a customer buys, they get just like an orientation. I'm so glad you joined our company. There's like, there's no, I don't need you to click on anything, I don't need you to do anything. I'm just super glad you joined our company. And I really, really love what you're doing. At the bottom, there you have, boom, you can add a, a, a discount or a coupon towards their next booking or their next purchase, right? I love this for gyms, for yoga places, for physical trainers and things like this. You've also got birthdays where you can be sending a birthday email to one, of your, to one of your customers. And this is really powerful when you make a birthday offer like, you know, roses are red, violets are, are blue. Um, on your birthday, we wanted to offer um, uh, one for the price of two or, or something like this, you know what I mean, where you get uh, <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I have to. Did you just make that up? I have to. I ask. did. I just kind of like pop, pop that, pop that <laughs> out. But I'm not sure it landed where I got to laugh. Is is but but you know the whole idea. Like I get these, I get these sort of like, hey, I'm your, I'm your, your, your dentist, and and um, happy birthday. And it's like I honestly I don't care. Um, but if you were to like free teeth whitening, I got a free teeth whitening from my birth for my birthday from a local dentist, and I love. I don't even know how they got my birthday. But I loved it and I actually got the teeth whitening, okay? That, that was back in the day when I could get teeth whitening. I've had since had my first four teeth knocked out by a golf ball and these are all fake. They can't be whitened. So they're as white as they could be. Uh, birthdays are huge. Send birthdays out. Asking for reviews. I leave reviews all the time and I leave reviews, especially for companies that offer me stuff to leave reviews. $10 off, 10% off coupons. That's very, very powerful. And then of course there's reactivation emails. These are very powerful in our company today. Anyone who has not been responding to us, we'll send out you know, three times a year, maybe twice a year, 
a reactivation email that encourages them to just, you know, get back in touch with us. Um, ask that, why did you leave? Um, you know, what can we do to get you back? And that, that leads us to sort of our second breakout today is I want you guys to start sharing with me. I want you to start building out your four retention emails right now. So on your client's birthdays, here's what I'd like you to do is you can give clients a coupon, a discount, or an, excuse me, you can give your clients like an email, right? A program. What can you do to help your clients re-engage with you on, on come over here, come over here, and on your, on your, your birthday? I want to introduce all of you to my, my assistant, who's also my wife. <laughs> and she brought me that coffee finally. So thank An you. An hour later. Thank Yay! you, my love. Thank you, my love. Oh, and God is uh, coffee. Birthdays. You can wish them blank and offer them a blank. Fill that in. Okay, you wish them happy birthday. And you offer them a what? And it doesn't have to be free, guys. I'm not trying to get you to get them to spend something. 20% off. Right? And the, the goal of this exercise here is actually to get you thinking in terms of more than just one discount, right? More than just one free session, like a 50% off free session or 20% um, off um, any product purchase on the website. Um, how about free shipping for anything on the website? I want you guys thinking of, of, of different things that you can do. To get a review, you can ask clients to rate me on what? Yelp, Google Business, what is it? And in exchange for a review, you can offer them what? Okay, and the same with inactive clients, okay? So take a minute right now, I'm gonna turn it back over to Rachel. Take a minute right now and fill in the blanks on this so that when we walk away today, you actually have a document with not just notes on the brilliant things I'm saying, right? Because I know you got pages and pages of my brilliant, my brilliant quips. But I want you to walk away with a Google Doc or an Apple Note today with what you can actually do because what Rachel's gonna show you is how to add this into Vesita so that you're building out a reactivation and a retention funnel today, okay? So let's take a moment and do that. Take a picture of the screen if you haven't already, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the screen share and I'll come back to, to Rachel where Rachel's gonna take us in deeper into this path. Yeah. So first of all, Owen, thank you so much for uh, giving us those insights and thank you for giving those examples. And uh, just again, I love how you gave the Vesita example. Like I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me back then. I was like, I thought we we're just having like very casual conversation. Like, I just want to say this just for the sake of you, you guys should know that, you know, sometimes I think when you have like a personal relationship with a customer, approaching them with an upsell offer, you could be thinking like, oh, wait a second. Like, I don't want to compromise the relationship. I don't want them to think I'm too pushy. But I think that was actually a great example of how we were having this conversation. You know, I sort of had like one thing in mind. Suddenly you gave me a curveball. You're like, hey, let's do the three. It's like, you know what? That's actually an excellent idea. And it turned out to be so great. And I'm really thankful for you, you know, taking that initiative and giving me that upsell pitch. So I think that's just a, like a little tip for everybody. You know, if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable about bringing it up or doing the cross seller upsell, it's definitely something, you know, it's part of the relationship. People might even expect it from you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to implement that strategy within Vesita. Just give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. And we're on. Oh, and you can have your coffee now. So, um, when it comes <laughs> go, go for it, go for it, man. Um, so when we want to look at Vesita as a retention tool, not only as a lead generation and kind of customer management tool, um, there's a feature that is really kind of tailored exactly for these four touch points, which is called automated campaigns. And I'm not sure all of you have seen this before. And um, just in case you're kind of unfamiliar with the whole marketing module, I'm actually going to take some time at the end of the session to show to take a step back and show you some of the things you have to set up before you can do your automated campaigns. But let's look at your automated campaigns right now. So basically your automated campaigns are campaigns that you set up once and they start sending continuously. They'll, they'll basically go out forever as long as you have an active Visita account. You set up the rules, you say what you wanna to send to who and what, what you want your trigger to be. And then these emails just sort of send like on autopilot and the background, you know, you can be on vacation and your customers are getting their little happy birthday cards because it's happening in the background autopilot. 
Um, you can edit and customize it. So you can com completely make it yours. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. You can track the results. So you'll see, you know, oh, wait a second, how many people are even looking at these emails? How many people clicked? If I sent a coupon, how many people even, you know, use that coupon? And of course, you can create your own. You can go out, think outside the box. You don't have to stick to these four touch points. Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like within the system. If you head over to the marketing module, so that's marketing on your main Vasita menu, and then go to automated campaigns, this is the screen you're gonna see. These are your four presets. So see, these are the four automated campaigns that are already in the system. You can edit them by clicking on edit. You can preview them if you want to see what they look like, like in, a, in an online environment. Um, so let's just take some time to review them one by one. The first one is the welcome aboard campaign, the one you want to send to new customers. So in terms of content, you know, we've put together, like we drafted an email that we think is, you know, pretty good if you're not really into, you know, crafting your own messaging, but it's definitely worth to take some time and rewrite this email. If you, if you participated in the breakout today, you know, maybe copy paste whatever you prepared today. Um, here, the call to action is client, uh, visit my client portal, but it could be anything, you know, it could be, here's a 10% coupon you can use for your next purchase. It could be, you know, give me a call. I'm looking forward to hear from you. It could be, you know, join my Facebook community. It could be literally anything. You choose the call to action. You can even choose the image. We have this really great uh, library of um, royalty-free images that you can choose from if you don't have any images of your own. On the right-hand side, so this, there's your editor. That's where you're going to edit your content. And on the right-hand side, these are, this is the trigger. So this is when you, how you set up the rule that's going to send these campaigns out um, all the time. So you can, you can set up the, like the time, you know, what time of day you want it to go out. The recipient setting is really important, who you want to send it to. So this looks at, at a component in your CRM called uh, client status. If you're already using statuses, we actually covered it last time. But in case you're new to this, I'll just take a minute to explain that statuses is, it's basically like a, like a sticker that you stick on each new customer that comes into your system. Is this person a lead? Is this person a customer? Is this person a VIP customer? You have these statuses that reflect where you are in the relationship with that customer. And this is something that you can change over time. So, you know, whoops, okay, this guy just converted from lead to customer or from customer to VIP customer. And you can actually automate some of that. And all the, the automation can change, you know, people's statuses according to what they're doing with your business. If they bought something, if they paid you for something, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the session. So stay online if you're not familiar with uh, statuses and the automation process. So you're going to choose which status you want it, what, what, what you want your event, like what, um, which event you're going to use as a trigger. So here we can say, you know, okay, um, every time a lead converts into a customer, every time that status changes from lead to customer, I'm going to send out this welcome email. I'm going to give them this coupon, or I'm going to invite them to my client portal. You can choose your delivery method. So it can be either via um, SMS, uh, uh, text message, or um, email. You can cu obviously customize the uh, subject line of the email. So this is your welcome aboard campaign, your first touch point. The second campaign is the reactivation campaign. So this is actually for customers you haven't heard from in a while. You know, you Owen was talking before about how the cost of acquisition is so high. You invest so much in getting a new customer. And then sometimes, you know, people, they, they buy from you once and then, you know, some time goes by, they haven't come around to do business with you again. This is a great email to send for inactive customers. So again, you can completely edit the template, choose the call to action, choose the image. This is actually a good time to uh, offer a coupon, say like, hey, I haven't heard from you in over a year. You know, if you if you reach out now, maybe we can have a conversation. I can give you whatever 20% off on your next purchase. And here you're going to set up on the right hand side in the settings, you're going to set up how long you want to wait before this kind of email goes out. So here, uh, just in this example, I wanted to wait 97 days before I send out an email like this. So this has been 97 days since this person has um, bought anything from me. So this is probably, you know, it's basically a quarter. So it's a good time to reach out and try and get uh, conversation going. Again, you know, you'll have to set up the recipient settings and the delivery method. The next campaign is actually a really important one. This is the review campaign. So with reviews, it's a little bit tricky because some businesses, you know, might feel comfortable about send, sending everyone a request for reviews, but some businesses, with some businesses, it could be a little bit more sensitive. You know, you might want to sort of test the waters and do like a little bit of an audit before you send people to post um, a, a, a reviews on these like public platforms. You know, you want, you might want to have like an internal review process first. And if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. And that's possible to do within Visita as well. So from your announcements, from your campaigns, you can send out an email that says, 
hey guys, what's up? You know, how's it going? Give me a review. Tell me how, what you thought about my service. Tell me what you thought about my business. So this is actually a template that's already ready. It's already in your account. You can send it out as is, and you have to just set it up. So the, li the link will go to this window over here, the one you're seeing next to the campaign, next to the campaign template. So how would you rate your experience on a, on a scale from one to five? They, they, they can uh, give you um, any amount of stars from one to five and add a little personal note. And this doesn't get posted anywhere. This will come to you. So it's a great opportunity for you to see, you know, if someone gives you five stars, that's awesome. You know, you can thank them, you can send them a coupon. If someone gives you, you know, two stars or maybe even one star, you know, it's kind of a bummer, but it's actually a great opportunity to reach out to this person and say, hey, what's happened? Like, what happened? You know, let's, let's talk about it. Were you unhappy with, you know, the product or service you purchased? Maybe we can figure something out. You know, maybe we can get a conversation rolling that'll, that we'll both benefit from. So this is like an internal process you might want to run first. And then what you can do with the automation, and this is actually super cool, you can set an automated campaign to go out to anyone that gives you a rating of four or five stars. So, so when someone gives you that internal rating and you're happy with it, you say, okay, four or five stars, I'm ready to ask this person to post a review online. You can send them this email that says, hey, you know, head over to my Facebook profile or to my Yelp or to my Google, give me a good review and get whatever, 10% off your next booking. So again, this is like a two-step process. You do the internal one first. And then once you start getting those positive reviews, you can automatically have, every time someone gives you that five-star or four-star review internally, you send them this campaign, which is great. A lot of our customers use this and they absolutely love it because it's a very, it's very, it's a very like great kind of relationship building activity to have with your customer. You know, ask for a review, send them to your public pro, uh, uh, profile. So many people now, you know, won't buy, literally won't buy a popsicle before they look at reviews online. So this is important. Investing in getting good reviews on your social media profiles is super important nowadays. The last campaign I want to look at is the birthday campaign. So this is a fun one. You know, I get like on my birthday, I get like the most random emails from these companies. I don't even remember I purchased from, but I still think it's a, like, it's a great opportunity for retailers or anyone that sells services to kind of get in front of people. It's almost like a reactivation campaign. It's like these people can be people you haven't done business for in a while. And the birthday is just like a great excuse to reach out without being pushy and, you know, maybe be fun, be, be fun about it. You know, write them like a cute little, um, a cute little note. I just got this, uh, when I had my birthday, I got this. So I actually wanted to take a screenshot for the, for the presentation. I couldn't find it. I must've deleted it. But I had this cutest email from this bathing suit designer that like was wishing me like a beachy year and, the perfect tan and all this stuff that like was in this element of bathing suit. So I thought that was super cute. Um, this, you can set it up, you know, obviously goes out on the customer's birthday. You can set up, you know, it's all the same settings. You can set, you know, if you want to send it to a particular status or if you want to send it to everybody, if you're not sure, if you don't have your customer's birthday and you're not sure how to collect them, stay online because at the end of the session, I'll show you a quick demo of how you can actually collect your customer's birthdays from within Vesita. So these were, those are the four presets. Those are the four touch points that are already in the system, already in your account. Again, just head over to marketing and then automated campaigns and you'll see the four of them. If you want to create your own, just scroll down on this page, you'll see add automated campaign. If you click on that, you'll get a couple of options. So you can, a, you can add like another trigger based, uh, another date based um, campaign, like for anniversaries or for business anniversaries. You know, you can send someone like, hey man, this is our one year business anniversary. It's been exactly a year since you purchased for me for the first time. You can, you can reconnect with um, your VIPs. You know, if you want to congratulate someone for making it into the VIP circle and giving them some sort of um, coupon or special offer, that's really cute too. I get a lot of those emails as well. This is a, in general, this is an area of the product that is worth exploring. You know, you have to sort of come with your ideas, but also come open-minded try and check out this campaign library and see if any, if you can think of any other reasons that you can reach out to your customers and uh, build up that retention and customer loyalty. So just again, I'm going to hand it over back to Owen, but stay online. If you want a couple of extra demos at the end, I'm going to show you how to do the status thing and how to collect birthdays, just so you have all the information to sign off right up after the session and go set everything up in your Vesita account. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I really, really love, um, what Vesita is doing. I have been a Vesita user for uh, six, seven years. Um, I've been using Vesita. I remember the first time I heard, I was at a conference and someone's like, use Vesita. And I'm like, I'm like, how do you spell Vesita? And that she looks at me in front of everybody and she goes, seriously? She's like, I can't help you guys do that type of stuff. She's like, Google it, figure it out. 
And it was like this real like womp, womp, womp <laughs> moment, you know what I mean? But, but you know, at the same time, um, I got Pasita and, uh, and, uh, and I've, I've used it ever since. So that was, that was years ago. This whole, like the features that you're adding, that Pasita is adding and the, that Pasita has been building out. Like I used to have to use six, seven different softwares to do all the things that Pasita does all in one. And that's why I, cause it's like, it's, it's almost like your business software is, is almost what Pasita is. It's like, I want to start a business. Okay. Get a Vesita account and then come up with a product or a service. You know, it's like, as long as you have the I, I mean, I mean this truly like you have an appointment scheduler. Uh Oh, I think my, yeah. Owen's microphone doesn't like us today, but, uh, but that's some really great feedback. And in, in fact, you know, we do, we try to create this really all this all in one environment exactly because of what Owen's describing. You know, I used to be before I before I started working for Vasita and, and in general in the tech industry, I used to be a marketing consultant. And I used to do this thing where I would try and set up my small business companies with like a whole variety of tools. So like this is for collecting payments, this is for marketing. And what I loved about Vasita and what's the main reason one of the main reasons I actually started working for Vasita is because it kind of takes this collection of these five or five or six, you know, clunky platforms that don't communicate with each other and merges them into yeah. one platform that yeah. you can just use, you know, you can start your day with Visita and end your day with Visita. It really has your end to end solution for any small business. Yeah. No matter what you I really sell. love it. And I, I really love this idea of like, when someone joins your VIP program, they get this other welcome email because you know, emails are not just about sort of like getting clicks and open rates. And I, I, I could talk with you guys all day about open rates and subject lines. But it's also about sort of showing up like a boss, right? It's also about just kind of like, wow, Owen really has it all together, right? Or wow, Karima really has it all together, right? And, and just really showing up. And the features that are available in Vesita, you guys should be using them. And speaking of features, we are actually making announcements I'm making an announcement right now today for the first time ever about the newest Vesita feature in the Vesita family. And I am super excited about this because how many of you have ever sold one thing to somebody who would have bought five if you had asked them? Have you ever walked away from a sale and you're like, dude, that guy would have bought seven if I had just asked him, you know? Or, or you, I, I remember I was selling windows. I used to sell like in-home window retrofit and you get a bathroom window, a kitchen window, you know? And and I would walk out selling like a bay window and I'm like, I could have easily sold that guy bathroom windows. I wish I would have done that. Well, Vesita has recognized that and has introduced a brand new feature that will be available <clears throat> in a couple of weeks. However, if you're on this presentation right now, you're gonna get a chance to actually join the beta group for this brand new service and it's called Packages. Vesita is introducing a brand new program, a brand new feature called Packages. And with Packages, you're gonna be able to, instead of just selling one session, you're gonna be able to sell multiple sessions and increase your revenue, even 5X or 10X your revenue, practically overnight. Packages provide your business with a win-win. The customer gets better value for their money and you get repeat business. The customer also pays up front with the package. So even if they miss out on their appointments, right? You guys can work that out on the back end. They've already paid. You're no longer held, held captive by this. I'll pay you next week. Or, you know, can you, <clears throat> can, you, can you cash this check next week or whatever the case might be. With packages, excuse me, you can bundle your best sellers with multi-appointment pricing and a scheduling tool that allows your customers to buy in bulk and schedule themselves using Vesita. This is a phenomenal way to reward your loyalty customers and show them that you value your, their business. Now, setting up packages is really easy. You're simply gonna go into Vesita and select the service that you wanna include, set the discount, and then you get a link to the page where all your packages are featured and this is what you share with your customers. After buying a package, your customer can go ahead and book their next service. And instead of asking them to pay, Vesita will recognize that they have a package, they have credits, and will redeem those credits instead of, 
uh, charging them more. We are going to launch this live September 2nd at 1 p.m. Central Time. We're going to show everybody what comes out, but you can get an advanced notice. You can get advanced access when you type I'm in in the chat area right now. Rachel and her team are going to reach out to you and they're going to let you into the beta, which means you get to start trying this out and selling it right now. Now, so if you've ever been in a place, you've ever been in a place where you know you could have sold more if you just had the, had the foresight, the thought of it, you've, oh my gosh, with packages, it'll never happen again. You'll have packages on your website and it's gonna be an amazing day. And I promise you, because we're already, we're already doing something similar on our website, as soon as I added the package, we sold two of them through just regular SEO from the regular traffic that already comes to my website, which I'll be honest, is not a lot. We get more traffic on YouTube than on our website, which is why we want it monetized. And as soon as we added packages there, we sold packages because people want more than one. So this is coming out very, very soon. It's really very exciting. Type I'm in in the chat area right now if you wanna be let into the beta. Um, and I can see you're already writing emails. That, uh, that works with us as well. So type I'm in and then Rachel will take care of you from there. Okay, Absolutely. Rachel, back to you, my friend. Just make, yeah, just make sure to add your, the email you use for the, your Visita account so we can connect you with your account and include your in the beta and obviously, you know, get in touch and let you know what that includes and when we're getting started. So just write, I'm in, and if you haven't added your email, go ahead and drop us your email that you use for your Visita account. And just like Owen mentioned, we are doing a Facebook Live. We're going to launch it. We're going to do a whole demo and give you the best pro tips for how to use packages and how to optimize it for your business business. I just dropped a link in the comment section. So make sure to head over there and register for our Facebook live. It's going to be so much fun. I am so excited about this. You guys. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Maureen asking a great question. Um, and I think we'd like to, to do that. Or is it Marin? Somebody Marin said, I do this on my website already, but I'm not using Vesita to the fullest potential. That's the number one thing I hear from Vesita customers is I'm not using Vesita to the fullest potential. You got to get involved in the community. And wouldn't you guys love to see like a Vesita YouTube channel? I mean, honestly, wouldn't, who would love to see a Vesita YouTube channel where all of these tips are unpacked? on a YouTube channel. Rachel's laughing because I'm cross-selling her right now. <laughs> Not, yeah, it's just like kind of subtle, you know, cross-selling in front of an audience, but that was cool. That was a great demonstration of how to execute the strategy that we covered and today. And scene, I loved it, I loved it. Bravo. Oh, I'd love to answer any questions. Um, I know that Rachel, you're gonna go into some more uh, demo uh, and I've got a jet. We've got a full day here in the studio. So I'd love to hear from you guys if there's any questions that we can answer. How can I answer them for you? And I'd love to hear like anybody who, who is, is workshopping and, and you want to get feedback. Here's, here's the thing I want to show you guys right now. We, we kind of showed this slide earlier, but I want to show it one more time because we encouraged all of you to sort of share uh, to take notes and to write down your strategy. So I want to encourage you to take a picture of your notes from today and post them in your Instagram or in your Facebook story. Tag Vesita or tag Owen Video and we're going to share those out with our audience as well and bring more exposure to your business. I want you to take a picture of your note. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh my gosh, Owen, I wrote all these notes that are like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But what if I don't do them? Look, you, you have plenty of time for that. I want you to get into the habit of showing people what's coming. We call it vision casting. This is a leadership technique. I want you to get into the habit of showing your customers what's coming and getting them excited about what you're working on, even if it's not available yet. Just like what, what Rachel and I did is we are, we're promoting this new feature that's not even available yet, but it's something that you should be very excited about. So take a picture of your notes. It's okay that they're raw. It's okay that they're revealing. Take a picture of your notes, post them in your story, tag us, say, I'm working on some really cool stuff with Vesita and Owen Video. We're going to reshare it and bring even more exposure to your Instagram, to your Facebook pages. So I want to ch challenge you guys to do that, to stay in touch, because as you're creating this content, I want you guys to feel like you have a place to go. You have someone to ask. The Vesita community on Facebook is a great place for that. And if you can reach me on IG, just send me a DM. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you're up to. And scene. 
I am just, guys, I just posted two links in the comments area. Those are the links to view cool. our previous sessions, session number one, session number two. Make sure to copy and paste. Don't go anywhere yet. I am also posting a link to our Facebook Live that will reveal the packages feature. You definitely want to hop on this one because it is going to be a great demo, step-by-step, -step, super detailed, and we're going to give some uh, best practices and tips of how you can customize the feature so it works well for your business. So copy and paste these um, links for later. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a little bit more of a breakdown um, on some of the stuff we kind of touched upon earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to ask you to give me a thumbs up that you can see my screen because it, you know, it all takes is once, you know, there was the one time I thought I was sharing my screen and I wasn't, and that's it. I have a lifetime fear, fear. Of, of not sharing my screen while I think I am. So yeah. thank you, I see, thumbs up. So thanks for the confirmation, guys. There's three things that I wanna show you. I wanna show you one, how to use Vesita to collect birthdays if you don't have them yet. Two, how to set up customer statuses, which are important if you wanna use the automated campaigns. And three, setting up coupons, which are super important if you wanna use automated campaigns or the regular old school campaigns that aren't automated. So let's start with the birthdays. You're gonna head over to your settings page on the main menu, go over to your client card and forms that's highlighted in blue. On this page, you're, you're gonna stay at, this is the first tab, the client fields tab. You're gonna stick to this one and you're gonna add a client field. You're gonna add a field that's gonna be added to two places. It's gonna be added to your forms. So the forms your customers fill out and it's also gonna be added to your back office CRM. So when you take a look at a, custom, at a client card in your CRM, you're gonna see this field too. So I'm gonna add client field. We click on that, this little pop-up is gonna open. You have to select a field type and field name. So field type, we're gonna select date. It's gonna be a date field. And we have to give it a name, let's call it birthday. Uh, which forms sh should include this field? So let's think, like, where do you wanna put this field? Do you want to ask your customers for their birthday when they're scheduling a meeting, when they're leaving your details for you to get in touch, or uh, maybe when they're making a payment? I, don't, I think it's a bit awkward with the payment, like when someone comes to pay you money and you say like, hey, when's your birthday? I don't know, maybe, maybe it works for some people. Um, but consider, you know, each business is different, so consider where you wanna place um, the, the birthday field, like on which form. Um, next, you're going to set up some additional settings so uh, you can make it required field. So if you make it a required field, um, no one will be able to submit a form unless they give you your birthday. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think it's nice for people to give you their birthday, but if they don't feel comfortable doing it, don't make it a must. You don't want to lose a customer because they didn't want to give you their birthday, obviously. Um, and then you can also make it sticky. So keep on asking, ask every time they fill out a form, every time they schedule a meeting or every time they, they make a payment or just fill out a contact form, you can keep on asking. The form, the uh, field will stay there until they uh, complete and give you the birth date. So actually that's not a bad idea. It's probably worth leaving the field there until they complete. So you make a little checkbox there and click on add. Um, so that's it. Now you have a birthday field and uh, slowly but surely you will start collecting your birthdays. Um, and that's how you can send out your automated uh, birthday greetings, which is a super cool feature and uh, bonus to build up your attention and customer relationships. Now let's talk about setting up statuses, which again is a super important feature. Just to take a step back, what are statuses? Statuses is kind of like sticking a sticker onto someone saying, okay, this person is a lead, this person is a customer, VIP customer. There's like a little bit of a life cycle here. You know, you go from lead to customer to VIP. What defines those transitions? So that's up to you. You can say, I want to, I only consider VIPs, you know, after they've been doing business for me for, I don't know, whatever, five years or up. Oh, after they've spent X amount of money with, with me. You know, I, I can, I, um, the transition from lead to customer can be after the first time, you know, someone buys from you or after they make their first payment, completely up to you. You're going to set that up again from your settings page, client card and forms. And then the third tab on top, you see you have client, you have client fields, intake forms and client status. So you're going to go to client status. You're going to um, click on this tab over here. And then these are your different statuses. So first of all, you can rename them. By default, we name them lead, customer, VIP, and inactive. You can change the names if you want to call them something else. That's absolutely fine. You can add your own custom statuses. So if you wanted to add um, maybe a status like, I don't know, like hot lead or qualified lead or not interested, you can add that from over here. And then this part is really important. And this is where you set up your automation. So this is where you set up 
when you want the statuses to change, what should trigger that change? So you can say, um, you know, when, when does the lead turn into a customer? Does that happen after their first appointment or group event is completed? So after they've been to your event or the appointment, does that happen after they make the first payment with, for your business? Or does that happen after the first invoice is sent? So you can, first of all, you can toggle this whole section off. If you want to manage your, um, if your status is completely manually with no automation, you can just use this little toggle over here to toggle off the automation, or you can leave the automation on and decide, um, you know, what your trigger should be for moving from lead to customer. Um, and then you can also change, if you wanted to change uh, statuses manually, you can do that too. You just have to head over to your clients, um, your CRM. So that's under clients on your main menu, and then select the clients that you want to change the statuses for, select them over here. Um, click change status button, and then you'll get this little pop-up over here that'll ask you which status you want to assign to the customer. So that's just another tip if you want to do things manually and change the uh, client card manually. The third and final thing I want to show you, which is super important, is how to set up coupons within Basita. So you're going to head back to your settings page and click on coupons right over here. You're going to uh, click on create coupon the big blue button. And this is a little pop-up you're going to see. So this over here, you're going to give your, it, let's just pretend it's a birthday coupon for now. So you're going to give it a name. Let's call it birthday coupon, birthday code. So this is what your customers are going to have to type in. This is the unique code that they get. They're going to type this in to get the discount. Um, you can decide what kind of discount you want to give. It could be percentage or it could be like a dollar discount. So it could be 25% or $25 or any other number of dollars or percentage. Um, you can set up a time frame so you can give, you know, people um, a month to redeem it, six months, one year, completely up to you. Um, how many times you want the coupons to be redeemed. So this is, this is completely up to you again. You know, I think, you know, it seems fair to me that you can give, you know, one coupon per customer, but if you wanted to give more, you can change that number from right over here and you can also cap it. So you can say, I'm giving out, you know, I'm only going to, um, you know, honor up to, I don't know, 20 coupons. So you can say the 20, the first 20 people to use this coupon code will get the discount. So you can cap it over here with the max redemptions. And uh, here's just like another, these are like, I guess, like the fine print, I guess you can call it. You can limit the coupon to a specific service. So if you don't want the coupon to apply to all services and same goes for staff members. You know, if you say, if you have some staff members that are swamped and super busy and you're paying them a higher rate, you might say, you know, okay, the coupons are only good for maybe the more junior staff. Again, completely, completely up to you, whatever makes sense in your own uh, business settings. So um, once you created the coupon, you're going to head back to, this is the campaign editor. So we're going to go back to the campaign screen and you see how here on top, there is the add coupon button. You have to click on it. And then you're going to get this little screen that's going to ask you to select a coupon. Since you already created your coupon, you're going to, this little drop down arrow will give you all the coupons that you already created. You can select the one that you want to include in the email. And then this is what it'll look like. So you see, remember how we put in that birthday code? So this is the code over here. And um, here, this little call to action, this is the link you're going to send people to go ahead and schedule their next service and enjoy the discount that the coupon gives them. Once they click on it, they'll get to this screen over here. So this is, you know, the usual um, service menu. This is where they can choose which service they want to use the coupon for. Um, once they select the service, they'll get to your calendar, select, you know, to book their meeting. And then when they come over to the payment screen, they'll have a little, you know, area in the payment screen that says have a coupon. If they click on that. It opens up a bar where they can enter their coupon code, apply it, and then voila, they got the discount that you gave them um, for their birthday. So once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Um, I know it was a lot to take in. So the good news is we do have uh, the recording available and it will be sent to your email um, probably first thing tomorrow. Um, before, we, before we sign off, I just want to remind you that this was session three out of three. If you missed the first session, session one and two were covered uh, content strategy, lead generation, um, and how to convert leads into paying customers. You guys really, really don't want to miss out on the content. It was awesome. All three sessions were done with Owen. They're all really fun. They all have Vesita demos in them. So if you missed the other two sessions, make sure to grab 
um, the links that I dra dropped in the chat earlier. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We're here and we're happy to answer any additional questions we maybe didn't have a chance to cover or anything that, you know, kind of comes to mind after. Um, I want to thank you guys again for joining us today. Um, make sure to check out the previous sessions and thank you Owen so much for doing this boot camp with us. It was super fun. I'm kind of sad that it's over. We'll have to think of what our next boot camp is going to be. If there's any kind of uh, topic that you guys are interested about learning, learning more about, if there's anything within Vesita, maybe like um, particular use cases or examples or demos that you want to see, drop that in the comments area right now because I will be reviewing this as soon as the session is over and like I don't know the wheels are already turning I'm already thinking about what our next content is going to be like. Um, I see we are way over the hour so thank you so much for uh, staying with us with the extra time and uh, you guys stay healthy stay safe these are some crazy crazy days out there so I hope you all stay in good health and uh, make sure to join us last time. You have officially graduated Vesita and Owen's video Build Your Funnel Bootcamp. Bravo, a round of applause for you guys. You guys are awesome. See you next time. Thanks again.